plant material centers, which are, there are 25 nationwide that are operated by USDA NRCS, are basically operating to select and develop conservation plants to help solve natural resource problems. Our priority here at Cape May is to select and develop plants that um, solve coastal problems. So what we're doing here at Cape May in relation to climate change is to select and test plants that have typically not grown in this environment but actually are naturally growing south and either are migrating north naturally or we feel that they have some adaptability and can help us solve a particular problem in uh, this particular area of the Mid-Atlantic. We look at plants and their um, resilience to climate and maybe their adaptability to heat and drought conditions and or flooding or in some cases look at their um, potential salt tolerance. With rising sea levels, salts are moving further up tidal estuaries and we're taking a look at these particular shoreline or wetland plants that may have adaptability to um, increase salt tolerances. So a farmer could potentially plant another crop in these transition areas that are getting wetter over time and getting saltier over time, rather than just abandoning those areas and allowing, say, Phragmites, which is an invasive grass, to move in and, and, and take over those areas. One of the plants we're working with in relation to climate change is seashore mallow, and we're working in partnership with the University of Delaware Marine Sciences folks, the Halophyte uh, Biotechnology Lab in Lewis, Delaware. And uh, that particular plant is a value-added plant that's, that provides ecosystem services in the transitional areas between wetlands and uplands or agricultural production fields. And it actually serves a function to reduce the uh, intensity that Phragmites may take over that particular area, as well as providing um, some ecosystem services as far as being a good pollinator plant. Oils from the seed could be potential biofuel or biodiesel fuels. The stems can be cut and chopped and used as bedding for poultry litter houses, or used as an absorption material, or even used in, potentially used as a, a, a cat litter um, product. So we're looking at these other products that could come from um, the seashore mallow. We're primarily interested in it as a transition plant between wetland and upland. It can tolerate occasional flooding by salt water. It's, a, it's basically a riparian buffer plant that can maintain some sort of a riparian buffer system in the event that, that salt water intrusion is occurring and holds off the invasion of Phragmites. So because of sea level rise, some of these transition areas between wetland and upland are becoming wetter and saltier. So we're taking a look at uh, alternative crops that could be planted in these particular transition areas like switchgrass, coastal panic grass, prairie core grass that could be harvested as a biofuel crop. Another plant we're working with that could be used or planted in that um, particular area of these transitional areas is uh, salt meadow cord grass. So salt meadow cord grass was once harvested in the marshes themselves. While well, with rising sea levels, these marshes are being drowned. So we're basically moving that production of uh, that salt meadow cord grass further upland or further inland and intentionally planting it as a potential salt hay crop which is still, um, there's still a demand that, you know, for that particular um, product. The Cape May Plant Material Center works with plants for dune stabilization and one of the plant that we're currently working with that uh, does not naturally occur in this area right now is, is sea oats. It, it occurs naturally from Virginia on south through Florida and the Gulf states. However, we have selected a strain and been working with that particular strain of sea oats since the early 90s and we're about ready to release that material to the commercial marketplace because we feel that it has the adaptability to our climate here and that can be commercially produced and sold and planted at least as far north as central Jersey. With climate change and our hotter, hotter and drier climates, our Cape American beach grass, which is 
uh, very common here in the, you know, along the Jersey coast, um, is not performing as well. It's, it's more of a northern plant. It, it prefers a little bit cooler climate. Um, and we would like to select and, and have, have the sea oats used as a component to beach grass in our dune systems. Uh, in the event that in the future, you know, with excessive drought conditions and hotter and drier conditions, that the sea oats would actually perform the function that beach grass now performs, um, but is, is not performing at the, at the level that it used to perform. The plant collection, selection, and development work we do here at Cape May has been ongoing for over 50 years now. We're basically looking at our work now with sort of an, a new eye uh, with, with climate change as being a, a major issue um, that is impacting growers, impacting farmers uh, throughout the country. And we're more focused on looking at these plants and adaptability and their resilience to, to changing climate.